supposedly it's going. Hey! All right. Okay. All right. He's alive! <laughs> it worked this time again. Yeah, we usually uh, give it a few minutes uh, streaming before we actually go live live. But, man, it's 8 o'clock, so. Yeah. Kind of got here. Snuck up you on know. us. All that, all that Milwaukee time rolling in. Chat. You want me to do the thing? Let's do the thing. Do the thing, man. Well, hello once again. You have found a Texas Team Punk connection, broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, theme verse from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, gentleman adventurer. Hello, hello. <laughs> With me, Ms. Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> and we with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely, because that's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. Hey, it worked. Cool. <laughs> All right, hey everybody. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. So we got some visitors here today. It's a little busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rita's already tuned in with us. So hi, Rita. Thank you. Hi, Rita. Hey. And yeah, yeah, we have a full uh, screen tonight. This is exciting. I'm very excited. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> so. How about we start? As we're doing a little bit of things different this morning or this this evening. This evening. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> yeah. Since we have so many uh, people uh, to discuss with and and topics, uh, I suggested we should probably forego our our drinking section of the of the show. <laughs> Not that you can't crack one open. Uh, Still but, you know, we'll just uh, usually. We spend like, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes talking about what we're drinking tonight. Um, but uh, like I said, there's, there's a lot to, to uh, talk about. So is, is that okay? I mean, y'all can, we can still say, you know, exactly what we're drinking, but just not to have it take 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, know, I know Mick was excited. He, he actually had to eat food before he could drink his. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved Normally, person. when I'm watching you guys, I'm just drinking my coffee that I kind of brew myself. But tonight, I decided to go ahead and up the game. Uh, everyone who goes to Renfest is familiar with mead. There's this other type of mead called Viking blood. Wow. And it is actually brewed in the old style. It comes in this new, nice stoneware bottle. And... Not your normal mead. <laughs> I've had that. That that is good. That, that is good delicious. stuff. And, and it's good. rather potent. Well, I'm back with the uh, the Love Street Blonde from uh, Carbach here at the uh, the brewing company here in Austin. So I still had a couple of these running around. Sticking with the classic Shiner tonight, so. Can't go wrong. I have absolutely nothing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Expecting that we were going to skip, but. Uh, oh, no. I was already no. running behind trying to log into this thing, so I, I didn't I didn't get a drink. Jack is, you know, Fax is breathing air tonight, like we all should be more often. <laughs> I'm huffing it, man. <laughs> and our guest, Laura Mayer. I was uh, just handed a glass of Castellero uh, del Diablo Carmenere. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it would have to be very unexciting seltzer lime water. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with seltzer. Uh, or lime water. One of our, one of our uh, <laughs> listeners, Rita, she's always, she, she doesn't drink alcohol. I don't think she drinks anything but water. <laughs> <laughs> She's had some other things recently. I can't remember what it was, but I know I know last time it wasn't water. It was think... it was uh, Lacroix fizzy water oh. with uh, limoncello uh, uh, flavoring in it. 
Man, you remember well. So good. She's got a plethora of drinks. Diet <laughs> Coke, tea. Come on. I'm going to start drinking tea here shortly, too. Uh, well, I guess considering that we are we are hampered by time a little bit, and we have a lot to cover, at least we want to make sure we cover everything that everyone wants to give out. Who uh, who wants to go first? I'm just kind of like, you know, I guess give us a little uh, little uh, quick quick biography of who you are, what you do, and why you enjoy doing it. At least when it comes to the steampunk aspect of the world, if you, unless you want to go into your real life, I don't care. I, I don't mind. I don't mind hearing about these kind of things. Not it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mick. Wow. <laughs> Well, if you don't talk about yourself, I'll talk about you for you. Oh, there's that. I don't know what he's going to say. I haven't really told him a whole lot about you outside of what he knows about you here. I'm just doing a comparison between two animated movies uh, because I don't get a chance to read comic books as often as uh, one of the other hosts. Hmm. But I do get a chance to watch movies a lot, and... Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of live-action steampunk yet, but there is a good selection of animated steampunk. And being the big geek that I am, I decided to compare two Batman animated movies. Uh, the first one is Batman Gotham by Gaslight. came out just a couple years ago. So based good. On the, yeah, based on the name alone, you automatically expect totally steampunk. It's got... It's in the right era. It's got some good gadgets and stuff like that. But there's actually the other movie is much more steampunk, in my opinion, and it's called Batman Ninja. It started modern day. Gorilla Grodd decided to pull one of his experiments through everybody back in time. So you were in like the 800 feudal Japan. And I know that doesn't normally sound steampunk, but all of the villains that get sent back in time, Gorilla Grodd, Poison Ivy, Joker, Two-Face, the Penguin, they all decide to take their large castles and turn them into Voltron-style fighting robots. So they all just grow up out of the ground and they start fighting each other. And then when Batman's about to win, they all five come together into one ginormous robot. And that just screams steampunk to me. And by itself, it's a good movie, really great animation, good storyline. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> so Blue Stocking was over here freaking out about it a little bit. I'm assuming you've watched this before. Yes, I have. I actually own it. <laughs> it's really, really good. Yeah, I um, I haven't watched it recently, but yeah, when I first got it, I watched it a couple times. It's just, yeah, it's really well done. It's very steampunk, and it actually falls in line. They did um, there's a couple of them that are uh, anachronistic like that. I think there's a Wonder Woman um, anime that's done in the same style. So yeah, they did it, and it's also. Um, it's from the comic book. There's a Gotham by Gaslight comic book. So yeah, the, the animated episode was, yeah, I highly recommend it. It was really well done, but I'm bat. I mean, Batman fan back from the Batman animated series in the nineties. So. You know. And it absolutely has a twist ending. The main villain is not who you think it's going to be. And I'm not giving any spoilers. <laughs> yeah. I highly recommend it. It's really good. It's beautiful too. Nice. That sounds fantastic. I actually do have that one on my list of things I hope to get to when I have more time. Uh, <laughs> I know it's on HBO Max. I don't know where else you can watch it other than getting the DVD, which yeah, I did that. I bought it on Amazon Prime, so you can oh, yeah, yeah you can buy it on Amazon Prime. It's not it doesn't cost that much, so yeah, you can buy the the digital download. Yeah. That's what I had. <laughs> nice. Oh, but Mick, what I what I wondering uh, since have not since I have not met you before, uh, what uh, where are you coming from? Um, you know what what got you into steampunk? What's your uh, what's your story? 
I'm a little bit of a late bloomer. I only got involved in steampunk probably about five or six years ago. And I was first introduced to it in the sci-fi convention that I work tech crew for. It's called Balticon Local Convention here in Baltimore, or Baltimore. And I came across a couple cosplayers that were just walking through. I saw it, and then I started seeing more on the internet. And it just, I was hooked like right away. Oh, for the past five or six years, I've been getting whatever I can, seeing, watching, acclimating. <laughs> and I'm actually in the process of trying to put together my own steampunk outfit based on Malcolm Reynolds from Serenity. Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good start. I love it. Very firm base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a, not a far jump. So yeah. <laughs> So I figured yeah, I out actually you guys because of Jack and I found Jack because of Facebook. He had an advertisement for Steam Chest on Facebook. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good so to know that advertising works every now and then. <laughs> Mick, what's the what's the steampunk community like up in Baltimore? Uh, have you been able to make any connections? Not a whole lot. Uh, I do make sure that every show I go to, I have some woodburn steampunk items. They've been selling, so I know they're around. They're hidden in the woodwork. I haven't gotten out because of COVID. I don't really go to events yet. I don't trust the idiots around here. So <laughs> I haven't found any events yet. Okay, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> the last couple of years, I don't think any of us have. I do know that um, every time I go to Balticon, I am seeing steampunk something, whether it be cosplayers or a little LARPing or just whatever. There's always steampunk there. Nice. I, I will admit, I have not been up that area for a convention yet. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more conventions in the nor uh, up, up in the Northeast. Uh, I know I actually have a couple other uh, subscribers that live up in like the Maryland area and they apparently have a fairly decently sized steampunk group. Um, I can't remember the name of the, of their convention that they have up there that they throw, but uh, I want to get up that direction. You gotta look me up when you guys get up here. Oh, don't worry. You're the first gal call. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so right. uh, your your uh your shop is Greek Gods Giggling, right? Yeah, yes, that's the name of it. Greek and, Gods Giggling. That's on, on Facebook, I, I know. Oh. Um is the uh the, the wood burning like your sole uh medium that you uh that you work with? When I started the company way back when in a galaxy far, far away, I was doing t-shirts and bumper stickers. I found there's too big of a market for it. There's no way I could compete with like Tea Turtle and all of them. So I still do it for fun. I got the heat press machine. I still do the printing. But I got, I've got i been doing crafting since I was a kid. And wood burning smells great. <laughs> <And it's fun. laughs> I mean, you, you, you'd be surprised what you can get if you just sit down and take the time. Uh, I also do a, uh, it's called Lichtenberg or fractal burning. You take high voltage electricity, you shoot it through wood, and you kind of get lightning patterns. Oh, high voltage. That's, uh, that's a favorite of mine. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah it sounds real fun. Yeah, they're, they're so beautiful. Yeah. I think I've seen this. It's kind of branch like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I actually some people say it looks like rivers. Some people say it looks like lightning. I've done cutting boards, uh, hot plates and trivets. I did a keychain. Somebody wants me to do a walking stick that they found by a beaver, beaver dam. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. Got to be careful with that bit though, because. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that'll let you know real quick if you're not careful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my yeah. This risk is going through my finger. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I have, have not. 
I haven't done, I haven't that. done that. I, I have, that's why I don't use sewing machines anymore. <laughs> it's um yeah, it's an ever present threat. <laughs> Just to get my nails done to avoid it. There you go. It'll keep it from going through. <laughs> So I'm just really grateful because I came across you guys and it's opened up my world. Uh, stuff I never would have know, known about otherwise. Practically everything you guys recommend to watch, I watch. And wow, nice. have given me loads of CDs to listen to. Aww. We have a lot of recommendations on this show. I don't think I watch everything we recommend you watch. <laughs> I have so far. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You gotta be careful about that, Thax. We wield power we didn't realize we had. <laughs> so you gotta keep that in mind. Well, it then turns around and inspires me to do wood burning items. So, yeah, well, <sighs> so thanks, Mick. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. I really appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. Sure, always a pleasure. All right, I guess we're gonna turn our sights over here to Laura. <laughs> yeah, Laura uh, yeah. reached out to us just after our last show to say, hey, I've got this Kickstarter. <laughs> I want to talk about it. I do. Uh, yeah. So uh, we're, we're down to like four days left on oh, uh, the Victorian collection, Advanced Costuming Techniques, yes. a book that you've put together. Um, and I, I posted it a few times. <laughs> on our Facebook page, I shared it. People's I attention. Shared it. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope that helped because uh, I, I got excited about it. I, I want a copy of this book. Um, Me too. It's so I'm so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's um, it's really exciting. It's um, it's my first Kickstarter ever. So, uh, despite what friends and and people that I know have said, um, the middle period is slower and um it'll drive you crazy i was like i'll be fine i'm like it's not moving <laughs> <laughs> still driving me crazy so it's true but um but i just feel it's really important to not um you know just hit go on the kickstart and go oh it, it'll just you know fund itself it's like no you have to tell people about it you have to get out there and um and so I was reaching out and trying to find uh, actual active steampunk podcasts, and um, and you guys came up, and and I checked out a couple of episodes, and I thought I'd reach out. Oh, yeah. well, well, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the book is actually uh, 15 of my. Uh, steampunk Victorian inspired uh, costumes that I've made and primarily um, to be worn at TeslaCon and different steampunk events um, in my tri-state area, um, Illinois, Minneapolis or Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin. Uh, haven't been too too much outside of the area, but um, so over the last decade or so, um, 15 that I've chosen and um, each chapter kind of goes into a little bit of depth about um, the process, um, historical uh, context or research that I did. And then I have chosen like one particular technique that I utilized in the making of that, uh, that costume, whether it's something having to do with trims or uh, like the foundation or, um, or uh, hat making or accessories, you know, like props. Whatever it was that I, I did that was kind of like out of the box or unusual. Um, and, and in that chapter, I focus on um, how you would start to approach it, things that'll make it easier, things that you want to avoid. And it's not by any means a really uh, in-depth excursion into each one, because really, if you're talking about um, Victorian trims, uh, you could you could go and get an entire book on that, and it would be full of really useful information. But if you if you uh, have a, a solid sewing base, you have a pretty good idea of you know you've done more than sew on a button, and you, and you have an idea of what you want to do next. It's it's meant to be um, a beautiful and informative um, starter. 
for all of these different techniques. That's Very good cool. because I don't think uh, the, the, the high, high level uh, sewing that I see that you're doing uh, in, in these 15 pieces, I think it would be way over my head. And I, I have a little a little sewing under my belt. Um, I, I used to uh, sew costumes for like Ren Fairs and, and LARPs. And I, I looked at some of your older pictures. You've got some Ren Fair experience there too. Uh, oh, yeah. Yours is a much higher level than mine still. <laughs> I, I don't think I have pictures of the first ones. <laughs> but, you know, um, God, it was recovering a bustier that I had in, in like, the, the upholstery velvet that looks kind of crinkly. Mm -hmm. and, and that, and then I made a, you know, a big skirt, and that was my first Ren Faire outfit. Um, the first... Uh, top and skirt that I made, I used Velcro on the skirt because zippers intimidated me. It, it's all just one step at a time. It's just I have had the experience of many, many more steps. Nice. Well, the fact that you didn't put the Velcro on with hot glue or something, I think that's, that's probably you know, <laughs> oh, no, peel the taking off. the steps quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's the peel and stick. <laughs> it works really well. <laughs> I just sew myself into it. <laughs> but since those first costumes, uh, I see uh, you've you've now got a master's in education, and uh, you've been making costumes for upwards of twenty years. Is that right? A little over, yeah. yeah. Um, I I first started um, towards the end of high school um, when I started going to the Ren Fair, and then um, and then shortly after high school. Uh, I started volunteering at the Ren Fair, and none of the costumes that you can buy there are period. And so we were told that we either had to make our own or find someone to make them for us or buy it off of someone who was there previous years. And I'm like, well, I can sew, I can make something. And then I started researching and started actually getting into it. And each year I would try and make something new or something um, a little bit harder in this way or a little bit more challenging or I'd find inspiration in uh, a painting or in, in a book. And so eventually um, I, I liked having my son words to myself so I stopped volunteering and I would just go and uh, enjoy being a patron. And it got to the point where my upper middle class, upper class costumes were um, getting pretty royal-ish. And I'm like, I don't want to be that person who's like all decked out and looking like a Fabergé egg and outdoing the queen. And <laughs> Because <laughs> if you spend enough time on an outfit, you can get there. Um, you know, just me beating my dress, watching reruns of Charm. Um, <laughs> and I chose not to go there. And, um, and so I decided to start looking into um, a different time period. And I had just been to uh, a meeting of the Milwaukee Steampunk Society, first time there. And, um, and I saw some of the uh, Victorian inspired looks and um and feel of the outfits that people were wearing i'm like oh i like this i do and i love corsets and they're definitely victorian corsets and so i started looking into that and my big my big bringing my first outfit out was at the steampunk makers fair at the fister hotel in 2012 uh just before yeah just before uh teslacon 2 and that was very exciting it was my blue and silver dress, and um, and it is going to be. It is in the book, and uh, and my husband and I won the costume contest that night. And they're like, "Who are you? Who are these people? <laughs> Just come in here, all dressed in Victorian gear, and sweep it." I'm like, "Yeah, I made the whole thing." Just roll in and win. Be well like, done. <laughs> drop Mike. Walk off stage. <laughs> my name is Laura. Oh, but that's I'm not writing all. a book. <laughs> I, I, I made some notes here. You've got another costume, a whole different costume that you entered in the same year at TeslaCon 2012 called you called it the Expedition. Yeah. And you took 
first in master costumer. That was amazing. It's so beautiful. The, so you kind yeah. of you started uh, you, you started ahead of everyone else. <laughs> Well, okay, but I knew that there was, I was going to TeslaCon, and I mean, two of the outfits that I made for that TeslaCon were, um, were not from, like, one was, um, I, I had made um, Katrina Van Tassel's dress from Sleepy Hollow, the very oh. end when she's getting out of the carriage in the black and white stripe. Oh, yes. That years yeah. ago, and, um, and I just added, like, a red belt and that was one of my outfits for TeslaCon too. And so, and then I made one that uh, looked very much like the pastel gown from uh, the Titanic that Rose wears. Um, it's like pastel and lace. And kind of like threw that together from a couple of bridesmaids dresses that I found. And so they weren't all the expedition, but, um, but I was like, well, I need a different outfit every day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm not trying to uh, to uh, uh, belittle your your talents. It's not like you just showed up with them. Although it probably seemed like it, you'd already cut your teeth on the Ren fairs, uh, and th those costumes are are pretty uh, pretty intricate. And if you're <laughs> if you're challenging the queen, I think you're you're kind of up there. <laughs> it, took, it took a long time to get there, but. Right, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that's that's, cool. that's amazing. So it's a lot of yeah. fun, and and part of the value that I get out of it is, like I said, finding something new and different in each outfit to do. Um, one one outfit that I sold on Etsy a few years back, uh, because like the expedition, it's it's a couple sizes too big, and most of mine, uh, most of my outfits are by waist size, but after a certain point, if the shoulders are just a little too, it ends up looking baggy and it's, you'd have to pretty much take it apart to resize them. And so I ramble sometimes. Um, so I sold it on Etsy. We all and, um, it was the first time that I had tried dyeing fabric and why not do it when you're about to make a, a huge dress out of it, right? So that was <laughs> dyeing fabric and that was, um, you know, try and do a lot of research on it so that I don't screw it up the first time. They've done a really, really beautiful job. I mean, your work is very impressive. I trying to decide which Kickstarter level I'm going to go in at. <laughs> like, can I afford yeah, the like was, dollars? Probably you're not. All over <laughs> right now, myself. <laughs> Alex, like, yeah, I, so I can't afford my dresses. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in those higher tiers, you you're basically like including your closet full of clothes yeah. piece by piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary, but just a couple of them. I have about twenty six steampunk outfits now, and a couple of them that are really just like done out of a couple of things that I got at the thrift mart. I'm not I'm not counting those as like I'm like I just remade this doesn't really count but i mean when i'm making like two to three outfits a year it adds up um that's a lot of time it does, it does. Yeah. do you take commissions um i i do i i tended to like get away from them a little bit because it's so it's so particular and and especially with uh the level of detail that victorian dresses often get you know so, so much as like you start out with like a uh, like a truly victorian pattern yeah. and 90 percent of it is what you do with it, with it you know like four of my dresses have the same bodice pattern as a base but i've changed things and i've added things or i change the sleeve or the neckline and then and then you have piping and then what you do with the the collar and cuffs and and that's where all the work comes in. Yeah. But um, but at times, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Probably will. <laughs> no, my my wife. Uh, back before we were married, 
she wanted to make me a vest for steam chest and that's the one i wear all the time and it was really her, it was her first like to build something for me and my first as a person who is getting custom clothes to have made for him and so i like my, my problem was i realized about halfway through the project that you're not allowed to really change anything once <laughs> it's down but my mind was like but if we do it this way it'll be a little different and that almost ended our relationship i'm sure um but we, i got this really cool piece of this this really wonderful vest out of it and i'm i don't know if i'd ask her to do a, a number two it needs it needs it's falling apart now i've been wearing it for like 10 years now but good quality uh, you know it was and it's fantastic fabric and she did a wonderful job getting the thing she did zippers two of them because i wanted to have this weird kind of pattern thing going on that she instead of just says no you're not having that uh attempted and pulled it off very well and uh yeah so i, I may have to learn to sew if i want another vest <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, and she's I, over I, here whispering that she's still mad at me because of it. <laughs> I can't say anything bad about learning how to sew. I have found no. like, designer things, uh, jackets and whatnot in resale stores. And because I can sew, I just adjusted the size and benefits. It's great. Yeah, I'm looking for the perfect jacket right now to rip the arms off of for a vest. For the over vest thing, but I can't find that one that Adrius Elba was wearing in the like the first um, what was that big robot movie where it ta where they tackle uh, Pacific Rim? Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, because it's like I love that jacket. It's like frilly and whatnot on the on. The, like, you could tell they ripped off the arms, but I'm like how? Where did I can't even find that jacket? But uh, yeah, <laughs> I just may have to make it. That's the that's the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. See, so now now the frustration turns into turns into creativity, and yeah. then it turns into despair as you're halfway through the project. And <laughs> some of us cannot learn to sew. My mother is an excellent seamstress, and <laughs> my I was in the SCA, so I knew how to make very very simple outfits for my SCA persona, who was a 10th century Viking. So that was really easy. But now yeah, I can't do anything. I my ADHD just doesn't let me focus on sewing. If I can't do it perfectly, then I don't want to do it. So, so I, I want to I want to see if I can use rivets instead of sewing most of the time. That could work. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> me better than hot glue. It's like why does my why does my dryer sound like I put pennies in there? Oh right. <laughs> oh God, I have made costumes filled with pennies. Uh, well, actually, I pulled up your um, your Kickstarter, and I think I think Thax posted before I could on the on the chat here. But you're really close to your goal. I'm assuming I have never actually done a Kickstarter, so if you don't hit your goal, does it like just stop and just start over again? It's just, it's just nothing. It's just canceled. It's gotcha. all or nothing. And I understand the concept because if you have figured out that you need X dollars to bring a project to completion. Mm -hmm. Then what are you going to do with seventy percent of those dollars? True. And all the people who gave you money are going to be like, okay, so are you doing it, or can you not do it, or are you kind of doing it, kind of like knit fifty percenters? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it does make sense, um, but it's still harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was especially when you're like oh, this close. It was hovering oh. at like seventy percent uh, through the weekend, and it just went. <laughs> And it's uh, mostly a couple of those mid-higher tiers. Um, I had a few sets of corsets and bustles that I had put up at a higher uh, premium tier um, from the, uh, what is it, 2014 Milwaukee Fashion Week I had made a collection for. And um, it was kind of like, I called it uh, retrospective. So I took a, uh, a decade and I made uh, an outfit that represented that decade. And then I made a modern twist on it. So I did the 1880s, the 1890s, the 1900s, the 1910s, not the 1920s because I have attitude about drop waste. <laughs> and then the 1930s and then the 1940s, I believe. So if that adds up to 10. So I did a, 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 a 
period look, and then I did a modern reinterpretation. And that was fun. So lots of corsets. And I will never need that many corsets. I already have a, a good number that I've made and a good number that I bought sitting downstairs wondering when I can go out again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. But that, sounds like a, that sounds like a full book in itself. Right? <laughs> You've done well, all the hard work. One of the stretch goals, um, uh, so the stretch goals, if you guys are familiar, if you meet your funding goal and you go past that, you can um, put down stretch goals for, okay, if I meet, if I get to 120% of my goal, then I'll add this and you can get these fun stickers or you can get this or you can have that as a reward to backers. So if you um, if you are at a certain funding goal and it just keeps going up and up, they're not just like, well, what are you gonna do with all that extra money? Say, I have to tell you what I'll do. <laughs> so all of my stretch goals I made to be more book, additional chapters. Oh. The first, so everyone bonuses from, or benefits from uh, reaching stretch goals. Uh, so the first, stretch goal chapter would be uh, Victorian undergarments, which I really want to do. Uh, the <laughs> second one is an additional uh, four outfits that I would be looking at specifically like I did in the previous chapters. And then the final stretch goal would be um, behind the scenes. So uh, sketches in process, uh, sourcing, uh, research that I've done, like this is fantastic. This actually has you know, the, uh, the, the patterns inside that you can resize and make historical corset patterns. Um, and some embarrassing back behind the scenes pictures too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just fun stuff, silly stuff. I like this idea. If you really, really want to do that chapter on Victorian underwear, you really need to make that like, like give us some sketches or, or, or something that like, you know, will like really like, I already want I already want this just because I know what that stuff looks like. But like I a teaser. Totally, yeah, give us a teaser or <laughs> anything within arms reach. I don't know, just like throw things oh. at the monitor, just like <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Why did I wore this? Look, look. <laughs> this would be fantastic. If only I could hit the scratch stretch goal forward. This is gorgeous. Oh, see, wow. right, see, right there. There you go. So the <laughs> embroidery floss at the tops and bottoms of the boning channels. See, doesn't that just sound interesting? Um, is to actually, it's decorative, but it's also to reinforce these uh, high stress points at the tops and bottoms so that the, the bones so will the actually... The bone doesn't pop out and stab you with it. Or <clears throat> rub against the fabric too much because that'll reduce the life lifespan of your fabric. See, we already learned something. This is perfect. This is fantastic. Learned a lot. We need to reinforce our whale bones so that they don't. Um, there's got to be some technical terms I'm missing here. <laughs> yeah, what is the technical term for? Wild, but, yeah. Punching through and stabbing you in the underarm. Now, if you can make that a feature, that could also be pretty cool. <laughs> A weaponized corset. A weaponized corset. <laughs> See, there you go. That's the, that's another chapter. You got your pantaloon chapter, and then you got your weaponized corset chapter. Your clothes. Hey, there used to be some company that sold Kevlar corsets. They were tactical corsets, and they were they went out of business before I could get one. But yeah, they had little pockets, and they were. I remember they, them. I remember yeah. them. Yeah. Your tactical <laughs> corset with your utilicals. Yes. <laughs> something. And, uh, and I remember seeing them. I'm like, okay, but what can you put in in a in a pocket this big? Now it was like a lipstick pocket or like a little. Yeah, yeah. you weren't gonna get much in there. It's the USB that saved the world. <laughs> you, go. you can't even put an A disc in it. You know that's what relics like. are gonna save the world. I did make a Elizabethan corset that's much less complicated. It's just a you know a funnel, um, but it. <laughs> It had every channel bone, so it was it was sort of sword proof. <laughs> um, so the Elizabethan corsets, there are ones with uh, waist tabs and ones with uh, without. There are ones that have a higher back and ones with and without straps. And it depends on if you're talking about like 
early Elizabethan, like like late Tudor, or if you're talking about like solidly Elizabethan. And then later in her uh, reign, because she reigned for like over 30 years, it, they actually started uh, being shaped a little more, a uh, little differently. Like the front got longer, and but it was conical. And you actually can make an Elizabethan corset from one piece of fabric. Not one single layer, but like one pattern piece. I have done this. And uh, they're not uh, necessarily terribly comfortable, but... <laughs> <laughs> you get you get the conical shape, and that's the whole point. I yeah, can yeah. nerd out about this for like so long. You don't even know. Yeah, I've, I've worn an Elizabethan corset, and they are not. <laughs> they look great, not comfortable. <laughs> uh, I've, I actually got to go to um, go to Russia because um, my grandfather was like, "I'm going to take you somewhere before you graduate college," and I'm like. That's awesome, Grandpa. Thank you. And we go to some of these really cool um, in like St. Petersburg and in uh, Moscow. We went to some of the museums of the Tsar, the Tsar museums. And there was actually an address, but I kid you not, I don't know if it could actually fit a person these days at all outside of being like 10 years old. But it was a dress made for uh, the princess who became queen. And she was like 17 but I swear, to, I swear, her this this was her middle. This this had to have been it, and the whole like the most petite person I've ever seen. It, it must have been because they have the actual dress there. It's still like in like perfect condition, and this steel reinforced glass cage, like air. You know, the, the whole the whole deal is like their prized possession was this was this cloth because it's almost a thousand years old. But um, yeah, I was surprised. I'm like that a person fit in that? No. <laughs> well, they could have had very, very tiny waist, but on top of that, they would have cinched it in even a little bit more for that special court presentation dress. Mm. The Russian imperial court dresses are the fanciest I've seen. They all had they had actual regulations on on how long of a train you must have on your <laughs> presentation dress. That that actually makes sense. I don't think I read that. If I did, I forgot it. But that you know. You bring up an interesting point now that I think about it, all the different ones I did see there. Uh, and oh my gosh, I got, I got flashbacks kind of when I was watching Shadow and Bone here recently of a lot of that kind of the, the czar imperialism clothing and um, was like, I want that guy's jacket. I want that guy's jacket. I want that guy's jacket. I just want all the, you know, looks like jackets apparently. But um, <laughs> apparently I like czar imperialism jackets. Sue me. But uh, Laura, yeah, do you no, even have was... do you even have time to watch television? Me? No, not really. <laughs> with, with all the work that you do, I find time. <laughs> I find time. Not you, Jack. I know you watch television. <laughs> Laura, <laughs> you have time. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear. <laughs> talking. I was talking too much about myself. My husband and I'll usually put some show on during dinner, so we'll actually get like something in. And right now, we're watching Blacklist. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He also has a good hat. He has a great hat. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, and uh, with your master's of education, I think you tease to be that you you uh, you are a teacher. You are teaching classes or have students or something. Is, uh, is it, are you teaching uh, uh, garment making and and tailoring and this sort of thing? Uh, well, when I first broke into the uh, steampunk community here, um, I was uh, head of the costume department and teaching costuming at a local high school. Um, and I was there for a few years, but I was there uh, in a part-time seasonal type position. And they're like, well, we know you don't have your teaching license, so you won't actually do the grading. It'll be done by this person. And so it was kind of like, and I went, I left there and I went to do a marketing, a full-time marketing manager position at a company that was um, horrible and I missed the kids. And so I decided <laughs> to go back to school and get, um, get my teaching license and, um, and, and, you could get that uh, post-baccalaureate license to master's 
you can get your license and your master's um, with just a few more classes. So I did that. And I've been teaching for uh, seven years since and um, until last January. And um, a lot of that was pandemic related. A little bit was um, administration bureaucracy bull crap related. Um, and I do still miss the kids, but I am um, pursuing my independent small business here and seeing how that goes. And the, the book and the publishing is part of it. Nice. Very good. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I have a few friends who are teachers and uh, yeah, I see their, their social media posts and it's a, apparently it's a, a common experience <laughs> fighting with the bureaucrats. Yeah. yeah. Teaching since the pandemic has, yeah, it, a lot, I'm not, I don't teach, but a lot of my friends in my PhD cohort, they do, they teach at the college and it's just, and I have friends who are elementary school teachers and, and it's just bad. It's bad all the way around for everybody. It's bad for the students. It's bad for the teachers. It's not been a good experience. As for someone who has a kid who's having to do the whole school thing right now. Um, yeah, no, it's like come to school and then immediately get sent home for two weeks and learn nothing and then come back to school. We, I, if yeah. you don't test negative yet, we still want you to be at the school yeah. so we get paid until you test test positive yep. or get tested, but still come in until we find out if it's positive or not. I'm like, this is really sketchy. No, thanks. Yeah. I'm not doing this. This is dumb. I'm not going to, I'm not going to risk, risk everything because of you guys want to get paid. But, well, uh, and on the kids' end, it's not fair to them either because it's completely inconsistent and unreliable. They keep being told, well, you might go back in two weeks or you might not. Or if you do come back, you might be back at home. And yep. that's not easier on parents either, you know, if they don't know what to expect or what to try and tell their employers. Ugh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's just, it's bad for everybody. I mean, I know, I don't know if the elementary schools couldn't do this, but a lot of colleges, including mine, um, instituted a, a, not a vaccine mandate, but if you didn't get back, if you're not vaccinated, you have to get tested once a week. And that's faculty mm -hmm. and that's students. We have, you know, your, your car, if you could, cause I got vaccinated at school, so they know I have it, but if not, you have to load up your vaccination status to the, the health services portal. And, they're bad. They're in the same at UNT, the other school in town. They're testing everyone once a week if you're not vaccinated. But I mean, I haven't heard anything about any outbreaks at TWU, but, you know. No, I've heard that it's a pretty common policy as far as like, well, we can't force people to get vaccinated, but we want to try and make sure that people are as safe as possible if they're going to be here. Yeah. And I mean, the, we, we still have kids. We have kids back on campus, but it's still pretty light load. There's not the campus is not as full as it used to be, which is also really weird. It's, it's, I don't know. We're just kind of halfway in between and it's can't decide if it's good or not. So. Yeah. I feel that. Zoom uh, classes were an experience. Let me tell you. Uh, I still have zoom classes. <laughs> it's trying story. to have 36, 36, seven year olds on a zoom call is uh that that is that is a special place in hell. I didn't realize existed until then. They're not all there, actually. <laughs> it's not trying like to get anything done. No. Students either. <laughs> it's, if if you're trying to get something across, it's not happening. Everyone's too busy yelling at each other and trying to have private conversations with a kid they haven't seen in six months. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The joys of teaching. <sighs> But yeah, so, you know, I figured this is one way to uh, still use my master's and um, justify my loans. Hey, all DAC is, is nothing wrong with that. I mean, sometimes you don't, you get the degree and it takes you in a different direction. So, you know, it sounds like the direction you've gone in is working very well for you. So it's, it's very, it's very intellectually stimulating. So that's I like that. That, that. that means so much. Mm -hmm. That does. There's a lot yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. That and five yeah. bucks get you a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Well, coffee's good too. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of, of things to do that you probably have to get tested to go see, I know I'm, I'm bridging terribly here, <laughs> but uh, I have a list here sent by Lex to me about steampunk events that are happening around the nation. Uh, and uh, let's see, we have the Mad Hatter Holiday Parade and Festival in Vallejo, California on December 4th. Wait. Vallejo. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, Vallejo. <laughs> I'll get it yet. I didn't even say it right then. <laughs> but anyway, apparently it's some sort of wacky holiday parade with cosplay and whimsical, whimsical car art. Okay, cool. I'm, oh. I need to like go in a back room and do the whole voice acting thing for my voice. Uh, let's see. Where the heck is... Oh, that's a place? That's cool. Okay. <laughs> Alexandra's Holiday Soiree. So soiree. Soiree. I'm going to... I'm just going to take myself out back and shoot myself in the face later. <laughs> <laughs> Leb it's in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Lebanon. It's Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Lebanon? No, it's it's, it's, Lebanon. it's obviously Lebanon. I mean, it's where the Lebanon. baloney comes from. Duh. It's Pennsylvania. Trust me, it's <laughs> Lebanon. Just like Shendo, Pennsylvania is spelled Shenandoah. It's just. I know, I know. We have a place in Texas called Ira Ann, Texas versus Iran, Texas. There, you're wrong. Yeah, it's Lebanon. Yeah. Sorry. So they're having one on December 11th. It's a steampunk festivities and dinner in a Victorian mansion. Ah, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. I, was not, I was not aware that there's a Victorian mansion in Le Lebanon. <laughs> I'm going to make, I'm, I'm, I'm already they're just, all gonna make fun of you. they're all going to make fun of me. It's fine. <laughs> then we have this place. It's, it's DizCon the third in Washington, DC on December 15th, the 79th world science fiction convention. I'm going to that. Oh, well tell us how it <laughs> is. Because that sounds fantastic. <laughs> And then, oh, and it skips because apparently nothing is happening in January. Uh, February, if Texas is not frozen over, well, I guess it doesn't matter since it's in San Francisco. Uh, February 4th, there is the Edwardian, Ed Edwardian Ball, the art and music festival with a whimsical neo vintage twist. Ooh. A lot of whimsy going on with these. I mean, if you're not whimsy, you might, you might as well just be, you know. Not, I don't know, something out of there. If you don't have whimsy, go home. Yeah, if you don't have whimsy, go home. <laughs> then there's the Atlanta Steampunk Exposition. It sounds a little, a little harsh. You call it expose, uh, expo, the Inquisition. I don't know. I'd go to that. I'd go to a Steampunk Inquisition. That sounds like a party. But it's in yeah, Atlanta, that's Georgia. Where Dragon Con is, right? Yeah, that's what Dragon Con is. So they've hmm. got uh, a high bar. <laughs> yeah. Why, why are they? I guess they're just not part of. Oh, yeah. And they, I love this. It doesn't like have actually like a tagline. It's just steampunk convention. Like, there's well, not I mean, even whimsy always... involved. There's no whimsy at this place. It's just it's an it's an expo. It's like a business meeting with very and, serious and steampunk. steampunk. Yeah. Only <laughs> only a serious of steampunks. Uh, then we have the Gallifrey One. In Los oh. Angeles, Gallifrey. It's Doctor Who, huh? <laughs> it's Gallifrey. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna send this to you later, and you can do it next time. You make fun of me. <sighs> I'm not making fun. <laughs> Sorry, right. I haven't actually watched the watch much Doctor Who, so I, I, I know I'm pretty. I've watched entirely too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is there really too much? I mean, I'm a. I'm, I've watched all like everything Star Wars related right now, so I'm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Then there, oh, speaking of speaking of Star Wars, uh, there's the Sci-Fi Barto, but it's spelled S Y F Y. So I wonder if it's actually put on by the TV it's channel the network. Yeah, that's pronounced Siffy. <laughs> it, <laughs> yes, it is because it's not actually the Sci-Fi Channel. Because what <laughs> channel has wrestling on after ten o'clock? I always um, wondered about that too. It's, it's because they didn't ever make enough money to actually be a channel, and USA didn't know what to do with a Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> yeah, so it's there, there's that happening in Bartow, Florida, on February nineteenth, and this one, this is really the one that tweaked my interest: the stupid Cupid Steampunk Ball in Manchester, Connecticut, on February twenty sixth. 
stupid, stupid Cupid, Cupid? Steampunk, steampunk ball. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Exactly. It just says a steampunk gathering. Apparently there might be someone shot to death with arrows or something. Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe shot to love. I don't know. But see, now there's questions that must be asked. We must do more research. We got time. Next time. Let's see here. And then, of course, in March, we have Wild Wild West. It's in Tucson, Arizona. Um, it's not going to be cool anymore because they can't use this, the, the, the Tucson uh, movie studios. They can't use old Tucson anymore. Oh, so it's going to be yeah. at a, uh, it's just at a hotel out there. And it looks like an okay hotel, but I mean. <laughs> Didn't we talk about this before, uh, yeah. before the con last, uh, this last year? Yeah. Does anybody know how that went over? No, apparently not. We, we should find that out from somebody. We need to find someone who went. It went. Yeah. Or if we did, if you we know can't anyone who went to Wild Wild West Con, <laughs> please get them up. We would love to interview them. I want to know if they have a giant mechanical spider. Right? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> That's a great song. What was this, the giant mechanical crabs? There's another good song we have to go look, have to look oh, at yeah. later. Who's that by? Uh, that was the external combustion engine, external combustion orchestra. Ah, we need we need to get them on here too. That'd be fun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then I'll, I'll finish these up. We got a couple more rolling in. We got thirteen gears. The uh, elect. It's not how you spell electric, but okay. Electric steampunk event in Minneapolis in March. The Clockwork Alchemy happening in Burlington. Bur Burling game, California. That's new Burling game. And then a steampunk symposium in Ohio in March. So, Ooh. well, Jack, I feel like you've picked out all the events that are not in Texas. <laughs> it, it's because there's none in Texas right now. Oh, oh, contraire. <laughs> okay, where did this one come from? This is steampunk events from the Steampunk Explorer. So, I'm reading it oh, off okay. there. Yeah, so I love that. I love offensive. that channel, that uh, website. They actually listed uh, Laura's Kickstarter way before us. Um, but as far as events go, they're they're not the first to know. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah, Rita knows Dickens on the Strand is just this weekend. That's right. Uh, That's right. Which is like the second biggest steampunk convention, sort of. It's a, you know, it's a Victorian Christmas fair, but uh, we took over. Lots of poetry. So there's all these like little old ladies in their Victorian costumes going, why is everybody wearing goggles? <laughs> and they still haven't figured it out. That's okay. They're having fun. But yeah, that's that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, there's so many welders here today. This week. <laughs> um, and there's also, you know, myriad Christmas markets and uh, uh, that sort of thing across across the Check state in every small town. Uh, oh, oh, here's something interesting. Epically Hogwarts holiday at the Mayborn Science Theater. Um, it's in uh, Central Texas College. So come it's to the science theater. We'll show you magic. <laughs> it is happening this Saturday. It's it's a, a Harry Potter themed Yule Ball. Which is cool. I, I don't think they've done that in years before. Um, that that could be actually pretty cool, depending on how theme how, how how well themed they're going to be. Are they going to have like booths where you do little corny things, like figure out which Patronus is? <laughs> I I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> is all the um, food going to be named? Are they going to hang candles from the ceiling or something? <laughs> These are things that we must know. <laughs> um, here in Austin. Uh, Bat City Antiques and Oddities Market presents Krampus. So that's sort of a, you know, Krampus-themed Christmas event. Uh, that's being held by the, the uh, um, Oddities Market uh, we talked about last episode. Um, I wonder if they actually have a guy dressed up with a horse's skull running around. I don't know how to pronounce that guy. <laughs> Let, let me converse with my wife. It's exactly nope, no idea. <laughs> it's the German holiday bit. You have to let it in. Like it'll come up and knock on your door, and if you don't let it in, you get bad luck. 
But if you let it in, it drinks all your booze and eats all your food out of your pantry and rolls and runs out the door. It sounds like a really good rap battle. It. <laughs> oh yeah, you have to <laughs> sing to it. That's right. Get you get a challenge into a rap battle. See, all of a sudden Germans are one up one upping us again. <laughs> this is this is what something we got to bring back. We got to bring back Yule time rap battles with with supernatural dead horses that want to come in and drink your booze. He's got an album coming out. <laughs> so there's you know there's Christmas villages and uh, uh, Christmas parades all across the state. I've, I've listed a few of them in my on my calendar, but just reading them all off it seems kind of kind of pointless because they're everywhere. Yeah. And there's no reason why you couldn't dress a Victorian or should dress. Uh, steampunk to all of these. Um, so that's you know, just always true. like a steampunk Santa hat. How would you make that? I wonder. I, I, I guess by making it, I get that part. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, oh, s January. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Burning Man. Mm -hmm. Um. Freezer burn 2022 <laughs> this year uh, in in Page, Texas. They're having it. It's a weird science themed. Huh. Okay. So, well, if you wait two or three more weeks, it might be all over Texas. Freezer burn? Well, it could be. Uh, that's, if last year is any indication. I hope not, though. Eh, prepare anyway. After what we went through in February. Hmm. Yeah, we'll have to get together and like stay warm or something. Facts. <laughs> Up here in Wisconsin, we call that an ice tan. Ice tan. Lots <laughs> 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 of chops. It reminds me of that picture of the pugilist guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The little fighting Irish dude. No, it's like this. It's like this <laughs> big. Right. It's a big dude. It's it's like this, it's a, yeah, it's a meat. It's a it's a pugilist picture. It's like drawn in pencil or something. And it's always one of those, um, like, Oh, you got a sun, you know, you got, you know, you got like, you know, what was it? Frostbite. Oh, you mean an ice tan? It's like this, like obviously <laughs> overly, overly, you know, a cheese mo character going on here. I love those. You know what? We'll have to add that to the, to the calendar facts. We'll have to get some pictures of you like that. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to get on the elliptical. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's an Edgar Allan Poe uh, celebration called Nevermore uh, happening right here in in Austin, oh. in January 16th. That's a Sunday. Sounds like a good uh, day to have a, a an Edgar Allan Poe day. So there's stuff happening. There's stuff. Stuff. I didn't really go much further than January as I'm cruising through uh, Facebook to add things to the calendar. Um, well, January but... is my birthday month, so I gotta go do something fun. You never got... do anything fun. I never, never do anything fun. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's always busy doing Christmas around my birthday. I'm like, but I was born on the 12th day of Christmas. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> On the twelfth day of Christmas, I was given to somebody. It was a bad day for them. Uh, well, so it sounds like there's things to do. Things to do, yeah. And we've come up on about an hour. We have. Didn't take long. Well, technically, facts. It took an hour, but it didn't feel like it. What? <laughs> It always goes away. I was digging in my my albums, and I did find a teaser photo that would be representative of the Victorian underwear oh. under uh, extra chapter. Would and you uh, like to sh Would you like to share it with the class? Yeah, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> There's a button near the bottom near the gear. It says share. It's like All a right. plus with a box around it. Let's see if I can. Yes. Yes, I, I, know. I just want to 
picture. I have no slides. What about I don't know what slides are either. I just saw them tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Upload your Excel program so you can give us a wonderful little slideshow. <laughs> I'll I'll just uh I'll just like share my entire screen briefly and make the picture large. That's what I'll do. That let's see here. Is it going to prompt me? There we go. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So you have a corset and a chemise. And the, the stockings are actually not period, but they because they're too thin, but it would have been similar. Oh. And if you can see it, there's a little black hook on the front of that corset. And that oh. hook would have connected to a, an eye on the inside of a bodice, on the inside of a like jacket. And it would have hooked around that to keep it from moving while you were walking around and, and keep it from shifting. So that is a good example of inside information in the escalator chapter. I love it. Okay, we need to make sure this meets its goal and then maybe moves past it because I want this book. Yes, but by all <laughs> means, hey, if you are listening and have the slightest interest in Victorian couture, which I, I think is appropriate, uh, by all means, go to the Kickstarter um, dot com. Just look up the Victorian collection. Um, I will. I will. I've already linked it on Facebook. Um, it's on the screen for those who are watching right now. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Absolutely. It's, yeah, literally, if you go and you type already. in lawyer, you know, lawyer uh, Laura Mayer. <laughs> Victorian collection into Google, it pops it right up too. So it's like the second or third one up on the on the list of the Google. So perfect. The Google, I, yeah, the yes, Google. I said it. The Google machine. The Google machine. <laughs> and Laura, after uh, after this podcast, you're actually scheduled to be on uh, Radio Retro Future as Tomorrow. well, aren't you? Oh, so nice. Nice. if uh, if you had questions for her or didn't. Uh, didn't get to hear enough of uh, Laura Meyer talking about uh, her new Kickstarter, Retro Future, Radio Retro Future tomorrow, wherever podcasts are sold. <laughs> Think blockbuster. And, uh, yeah, we do want to thank you for uh, for joining us tonight and and telling us all about your Kickstarter and uh, your experience. This has been a lot of fun, Mick. Thank you for uh, coming out, introducing yourself and. Uh, Telling us about uh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta, gotta go check out Ninja Batman. Well, I had fun too. Thank you for having me on. We're glad you were here. here. Let's see. Uh, on our way out, I want to thank all our patrons. That being Rita and uh, Kitty, Jenny Ryan Shaver, and Clarence. They are awesome. And they are helping us uh, pay the, the fees to keep us uh, running and, and our podcast continuing to be host. So thank you. Uh, if you are out there listening, you can reach us through uh, Facebook, through uh, email, texasteampunkconnection at gmail.com. We're on Twitter. Uh, reach out to us on any of those. This will be recast reposted as a podcast in the near future uh, to listen to at your convenience. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, that covers all our bases. Yep. Does anybody have anything else to add tonight? So both these people on the side of me here make really good Christmas presents. So you need to buy her book. I'll get it yet. The, the book. And then talk to this guy over here. He can get you some custom stuff made for out of Wonderful pieces of wood. I actually do have some of the the lightning uh, wood you were, he was talking about earlier. That will be uh, for the special uh, people in my uh, in Steam Chest. So you guys look out for that. Okay. And I have a cat that's, that's completely taken all of my attention. Same. Oh, 
This is Rex. He is 13 years old and he is 20 pounds. He is a very lo- yep. There. <laughs> there you go. This is yeah. He is a large, large man. <laughs> and he likes to be on camera. <laughs> well, thank you guys again for being on here with us. We really enjoyed it. We hope to have you back here in the near future. If y'all want to be. And uh, if y'all have anything else yeah. to share later or we would love to share it for you all right thank you thank you so thanks everybody for tuning in and uh until next time mind your gauges mind Mind your your gauges mind your gauges